Hello classmates! So what are the major differences and similarities between animal and human communication systems? Well, if you've referred to my discussion paper, then pretty sure you've got a great understanding or answer to that question. And with that being said, let us discuss another topic which is about machines. When we talk about machine, we also talk about computers and vice versa. This part 2 of my video report is so well known to 21st century generations or the so-called millennials. So with that being said, let us go on and let's try to discover more what's interesting to you guys. Let's talk about types of computer languages. We have, we have the construction language, a general category that includes configuration, toolkit, and programming languages. Under it, we have the so-called command language, a language used to control the tasks of the computer itself, such as starting other programs. Configuration language, a language used to write configuration files. Programming language, a formal language designed to communicate instructions to a machine, particularly a computer. And it has this sub languages like assembly language a language closely related to one or a family of machine languages and which uses mnemonics to ease writing scripting language a program language for a special runtime environment that automates the execution of tasks the task could alternatively be executed one by one by a human operator Machine language, or machine code, a set of instructions executed directly by a computer's central processing unit. And we have markup language, a grammar for annotating a document in a way that is syntactically distinguishable from the text, such as HTML. Lightweight markup language. Now, let's talk about modeling language. It is a formal language used to express information or knowledge, often for use in computer system design. And we're talking about hardware description language used to model integrated circuits. Still under types of computer languages, we have the so-called page description language. This describes the appearance of a printed page in a higher level than an actual output bitmap. Query language, a language used to make queries in databases and information systems. Simulation language, this is a language used to describe simulations. And style sheet language, a computer language that expresses the presentation of structured documents such as CSS. Now what is computer communication? Looking at this illustration, which I know you are so familiar with. So with that being said, let us just go on. Computer communications describes a process in which two or more computers or devices transfer data, instructions, and information. The figure shows a sample communications system some communications involve cables and wires. Others are sent wirelessly through the air. As illustrated in this figure, communication systems contain all types of computers and computing devices. For successful communications, you need the following. Or I say, we need the following. A sending device that initiates an instruction to transmit data instructions or information. A communications device that connects the sending device to a communications channel. A communications channel or transmission media on which the data, instructions, or information travel. A communications device that connects the communications channel to a receiving device. And also, a receiving device that accepts the transmission of data, instructions, or information. On. 
All types of computers and mobile devices serve as sending and receiving devices in a communication system. This includes mainframe computers, servers, desktop computers, notebook computers, tablet PCs, smartphones, portable media players, and GPS receivers. One type of communications device that connects a communications channel to a sending or receiving device, such as a computer, is a modem. Two examples of communications channels are cable television lines and television lines. Now, look at this illustration or picture. And of course, I know you are so familiar with this. So with that being said, let's continue. Yes, computer communications are everywhere may require that users subscribe to an internet access provider with other computer communications, an organization such as a business or school provides communication services to employees, students, or customers. So with uses of computer communications, we have the wireless messaging services. Users can send and receive wireless messages to and from smartphones, cell phones, handheld game consoles, and other personal mobile devices using three techniques, which are text messaging, wireless instant messaging, and picture video messaging. Moving along, we also have text messaging. This is a mobile device with text messaging, also called SMS or short message service. Capability allows users to send and receive short text messages on a phone or other mobile device. Text messaging service typically provide users with several options for sending and receiving messages through mobile to mobile, mobile to email, web to mobile, and mobile to provider. We also have the wireless instant messaging. Wireless instant messaging or IM is a real-time internet communication service that allows wireless mobile devices to exchange messages with one or more mobile devices or online users. Some wireless internet service providers partner with IM services so that you can use your smartphone or other mobile device to send and receive wireless instant messages. With a compatible IM service, users have these IM options. Mobile to mobile, mobile to personal computer, and web to mobile, which I think I don't have to explain because this is actually self-explanatory. Now, let's talk about picture and video messaging. With picture messaging, users can send pictures and sound files, as well as short text messages, to a phone or other personal mobile device or a computer. With video messaging, users can send short video clips, usually about 30 seconds in length, in addition to all picture messaging services. Picture or video messaging service, also called MMS or Multimedia Message Service, typically provides users these options for sending and receiving messages, mobile to mobile or mobile to email. Now, we also have the so-called wireless internet access points. At home, work, school, and in many public locations, people connect wirelessly to the internet through a wireless internet access point using mobile computers, smartphones, handheld game consoles, or other devices. Users access wireless internet access points with computers or devices that have the necessary built-in wireless capability or the appropriate wireless network card, PC card, access card module, or USB network adapter, and two types of wireless internet access points are hotspots and mobile wireless networks. What is a hotspot? 
A hotspot is a wireless network that provides internet connections to mobile computers and other devices. Through the hotspot, mobile users check email, browse the web, and access any service on the internet. Three hotspot technologies are Wi-Fi, WiMAX, and Bluetooth. Wi-Fi hotspots provide wireless network connections to users in public locations such as airports, train stations, hotels, convention centers, schools, campgrounds, shopping malls, bookstores, libraries, restaurants, and coffee shops. The coverage range for WiMAX hotspots can be much wider than Wi-Fi. For example, they can cover an entire city. Bluetooth hotspots provide location-based services, such as sending couplings or menus to users whose enabled devices enter the coverage Now, looking at this familiar picture, well, yeah, I said that because I know you are so familiar with this. And yes, that's the so-called cyber cafe. When we speak of cyber cafes, this is how we use it. When mobile users travel without their notebook computer or internet-enabled mobile device, they can visit a cyber cafe to access email, the web, and other internet services. And a cyber cafe or internet cafe is a coffee house, restaurant, or other location that provides personal computers with internet access to its customers. Cyber cafes exist in cities around the world. Although some provide free internet access, charge a per hour or per minute fee. Some cyber cafes also are hotspots. And here ends the part two of my reporting. Hope you did enjoy and learn from me. Thank you so much. This is Joel Chavez reporting for EL101 class. God bless you.